Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. God is good all the time. And all the time. God is good. Oh, just to think on him. It's worthy of bliss. It's worthy of joy. It's worthy of celebrating. Just to think on the name of Jesus. I ask you uh, to stand just for a moment in the reading of his word. Uh, we read our scripture, Galatians 6, 1 through 10. I'd like to read it again in your hearing. It says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such as one in the spirit of meekness, consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. May the Lord have a blessing in reading of his word and sanctifying his truths in our heart. God bless you. May you be seated. Amen. Truly, we bless the Lord. We thank him. You know, God is good. He's given us a beautiful day today. And we can say that God has been faithful. Amen. He allowed us to get through different kinds of weather throughout the summer. He allowed us to travel. However, we've traveled in plane, car, boat, walking, riding, however we got there, God allowed us favor to return. And I'm grateful for that. We serve a mighty God. Yes. He's able. He kept our family. The circle is, has not been broken. So we're glad about what God does. If I might use for you a word this morning, just something to drop in your spirit this morning, it would be opportunity knocking. Amen. Opportunity knocking. Bible says that as a Christian, we are commanded, we are commanded of God to preach, teach, and share the good news of the gospel. It is our responsibility to let men, women, boys, and girls know that Jesus Christ is Lord, the Bible says on one occasion, to the glory of the Father. It is our responsibility and our privilege that God has placed in our mouths a word for every believer of reconciliation that we might call men, women, boys, and girls to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it is the good news, it's the good news of the life, mm -hmm. the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. Oftentimes we get lost in the translation in our society because everybody else is talking about everything else. Mm -hmm. But the good news has not changed. Amen. Yeah. If you believe in Jesus Christ, if you believe he will by his mighty power to can change and transform your life from nothing to yeah. something mm -hmm. for his glory. Amen. The scripture says in St. Mark 16, 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. When I used to read that scripture, I thought that it was my responsibility to save everybody. It was my responsibility to talk to everybody. But the Lord gives you wisdom enough to know that I will occupy the space that you occupy for my glory. And I will use you as an example, as a witness, in your own circle of influence. I'm glad. You don't have to be like everybody else. You don't have to be like anybody else. But once you begin to allow yourself to be connected to him who is invisible, 
God will give you the words. God will give you the strength to tell somebody that Jesus loves them and he still cares. It's a clear message from the word of God that our responsibility is to tell people of the grace, care, and love of Almighty God through Jesus Christ. It is also our obligation not only to spread the gospel, as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, it is our responsibility to instruct, to teach, to care for the body of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. we, have a, we have a calling to nurture and encourage one another so that when a member of the body is suffering, that we are in a place to aid them in their suffering. Amen. We are in a place to encourage them. I oftentimes read in the uh, New Testament or throughout, uh, it's always letters of encouragement because this life can hand you something that you cannot handle. This life can hand you a crisis, hand you a situation that only the encouragement of God's people and the encouragement of God's word will get you through. Mm -hmm. You thought you would have lost your life Yes. But the word of God came to you in the midst of your situation and said, listen, the Lord is my shepherd. Man. I shall not want. And you thought he was going to leave you and then God would whisper another word in your spirit. I said I would never leave you no. nor forsake you. Oh, so the word of God is able to keep and contain you and bless you. And as, as, as believers and as members of the body of Christ, it is good that we can, uh, listen, nurture one another and encourage one another yes. in the good things that God has said about us. Amen. I'm glad. You got to read God's word. You got to meditate on it. You got to chew on it. You got to digest it so that when you're going through a time of dryness, when you're going through a time of emptiness, you can just satisfy yourself in what God has said about you. Amen. Bless the Lord at all times. So, oh, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. God will give you a word in the midst of a crisis that will encourage you. David went so long as to say, be bold enough to say, he said, I encourage myself. Yes. Because he recognized that I didn't, it didn't matter how low he got. It didn't matter how discouraged he got. He said, I encourage myself in the Lord. That's why it's so necessary to sing songs and memorize and quote scripture to yourself when you're in this life's journey so that you can make a melody in your heart unto the Lord. Amen. God will give you a tune in your spirit. God will give you a word in your heart to encourage you mm. that he is encouraged about you and he's concerned about you. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. Colossians 2 and 6 talks about the, 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 the preservation and the care and the comfort of the body of Christ to whom we are members. God has a purpose for us. We are members of his body. We are members of his flesh because we put our trust in him. Colossians 2 and 6 says this, As ye have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord, he said, so walk in him. He said, root it and build up in him. Let the measure of him be you. And he said, and establish in the faith as you have been taught, abounding there in with thanksgiving. He said, that which you've been given, that which you've been walking in as a member of the body of Christ. He said, do it with thanksgiving. Rooted and built up in the word of God and in the presence and the authority of God in your life. He said, with thanksgiving. Amen. Yeah. I don't know about you, but when I got saved, I got, became more and more thankful. Yes. I became more and more grateful to God in my life and his hand on my life. I mean, I recognize that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't make it. Yeah. And then I began to think about his goodness. Have you ever set somebody where by yourself and the Spirit of God begin to remind you how good God is? And, yeah. and there's a faithfulness that will well up in your spirit. Yeah. Yes. Well, and say, Lord, I thank you. Yeah. It's not that he did anything right then, but it reminds you that he's doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. It's a pleasure as a 
believer, it's a pleasure to know him. Yes. It's a pleasure. I mean, I've met some people in my life that were impressed, impressive. I met people in my life that had an impact on my life. But when I met Jesus Christ, Jesus. it became a pleasure. It became a delight. It became a fulfilling in my spirit that no humanity could offer me. My, my, my. Thank you, Lord. That's why I know why David said, I'm pretty sure he probably licked his tongue and said, Oh, taste, oh, glory. Oh, taste and see that, yes. that the Lord is good. He realized that having a relationship with God and being part of the company of them that believed was, was, was sanctity, was sacred, was, was a position that wasn't, wasn't everybody's position and, and that God reserved it for me, I got to give him some praise. Yes. That God reserved it for me, I got to give him some thanksgiving. You ever give God a hallelujah for no reason? Jesus. But it was for a reason. Yes. Because I thought about how good He's been to me. I know maybe my situation didn't change immediately. Maybe my circumstances are still the same. But God showed me out even when I was in and caused me to say, Lord, I thank you. Yes. 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 Woo, God, I wouldn't want to be nowhere that I couldn't sense his presence. I wouldn't want to go nowhere that I couldn't sense his presence and give him some more praise. Amen. Jesus. Because he's worthy yes, he is. of it all. He chose me. He chose you. He made you a member of his body and his flesh. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I think that's worthy of praise. Yes. I think that's worthy of some more glory. So it's obvious to us, or should I say it's obvious to me, that we ought to be about the work of ministry, not only for them that are without, but them that are within. Yes. So that men, women, boys, and girls can know that Jesus lives and he's yet alive in us who put our trust in him. Look at our text here. Look at our text. Very interesting text. Of the Apostle Paul would write many, many letters and God used him mightily. He was a murderer and God used him mightily. Mm -hmm. mightily. He, 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 he went after Christians. He had letters in his hand. He, he despised Christianity, but God turned him around. Don't, don't tell me that when God touches your life, he don't turn you around. Mm. He'll turn you around. Yes, he will. He'll make you new and cause people to look at you and say, who in the world are you? My, my, my. Because God will put such a presence in your life. Such. That you know you've been changed. That's what old folks used to sing. I know <laughs> I've been changed. Isn't that interesting how it has changed? The whole dichotomy has changed. We sing songs, I know I've been changed, and now folks get saved today, don't change. <laughs> Amen. That used to be the whole rhythm of the service. The fact that I could testify to being changed. Yes, yes. And now folks get upset and they change nothing. <laughs> Amen. That's sad, but it's the truth. Amen. Amen. There is no way in the world that you can touch an eternal God who you can't see, you can't taste, oh God, you can't feel, but who reveals himself to you by his spirit and not be changed. Because it's about faith and not feeling. Hallelujah. And when we have faith in him, faith. Ooh, he transforms us for his purpose. Now the Apostle Paul was talking uh, uh, basically generally in this portion of the text about our relationship uh, with, our, with, with them that have fallen or them that are weak, whether the brethren be an uh, unbeliever or a believer. He was talking about our character as Christians and how we ought to deal with it. Because many times uh, folk act out of character. So the Apostle Paul and I threw out the scripture, even Jesus himself became our example. So that we would know how to carry ourselves. Really, I, I can make it simple and so say we would know how to behave ourselves. Uh -huh. Not only in the church, but out the church. Amen. 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 He said, listen, if a, if a brother be overtaken in a fall, he said, if you're spiritual, if you're of, a, of the same mind Christ is, he said, restore that brother uh, or sister. He said, listen, basically, he said, encourage them. And again, we're talking about encouragement. 
He said, our position ought to be to encourage them. He said, restore them. He says, in the spirit of meekness. Amen. Now, I used to always hear the definition and people would throw it around and say, meekness means literally a strength under control. But it also has a, a, a deeper meaning because when a person is meek, they are, they are humble enough to recognize that God is in charge of everything, that if, 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 that, if without him, they would be nothing. So meekness not only strength under control, but it also has to do with our demeanor and our attitude, such so that we are, if you will, in a bow down posture. And because when you're dealing with the un uh, unbelievers, as well as dealing with the body of Christ, you have, to, you have to be able to exhibit some gentleness, some meekness, and above all, some caution. Some caution. Because you don't know their response or what their response would be. I, I was reading this, and the, the writer here, one of the definitions, meekness is a Christian's lowliness, his low or his lowliness. It is the disciple learning to know himself. That's what meekness is about, learning to know yourself. He said, learning to fear and distrust and abhor yourself. Lord, have mercy. He said, listen, you're going to deal with the spirit of meekness such so that Jesus said, if you don't hate your brother, sister, mother, father, more than me, he said, you're not worthy of me. Jesus also said, if you don't deny yourself, yourself, mm, he said, if you don't deny yourself, he said, my father's going to deny you. Because he says, I want all of you. So the spirit of meekness is a, really a self-examination where you look at yourself as, as nothing in the eyes of God. Mm. Mm -hmm. That everything you are is because of him. See, God is a jealous God. He don't want nobody to get his glory. So that when he even calls us, he says, listen, I'm better than you, and you're better off because of me. Glory to God. Yes. And so when God takes you to heights that you would never reach, he wants you to know, if it had not been for me on your side, um, you would be nowhere. You would be nobody. But I did it. So it's a level of loneliness for the believer where we just, listen, we not only learn to fear, we distrust ourselves and abhor ourselves. It is, it is the, the, the believer learning the defects of his own character and being able to take a, a helpful hints from friendly mentors. Uh -huh. You ever try to tell somebody about themselves in the wrong spirit? They don't receive it. But in the spirit of meekness, I can encourage you that you can do better if you change your attitude. But I can do it in the spirit of meekness, not bringing attention to myself as better than you. Glory to God. So oftentimes, people don't receive stuff because of the attitude or the demeanor in which it is given. So he said, if a brother be overtaken in a fall, if someone is struggling with an issue and have fallen, or some, and, and, or should I say, are in the process of stumbling, and you go to try to help them up, he said, just don't snatch them up. He said, just don't go at them like you're better than them. He said, you come to them that I'm in your place too, so I'm just here now to be comfort to you while you're in your situation. Amen. Spirit of meekness. Glory to God. Letting you know that I've been there too. That what you're going through is nothing brand new. I've experienced it myself before. Amen. So he said the spirit of meekness and it is disciple continually examining himself mm -hmm. so that he don't lord over the one who he himself is struggling. Okay. Amen. I've had people tell me some things about themselves that I know they couldn't tell everybody else. Because everybody else or anybody else might have said, you what? <laughs> Immediately. But we stood there and listened and prayed with them. Amen. And recognized that what happened to them Amen. could very easily happen to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the only reason it didn't happen to me is not because I'm so wonderful. 
Amen. But it didn't happen to me because it hadn't happened. Glory to God. It had to happen. Glory to God. So he's letting the believer know. He said, listen, when you deal with the brother or sister or an individual, whether they're in the church or out of the church, he said, deal with them with a spirit of loneliness so that they don't feel like you're crushing them as opposed to lifting them by means of encouragement. Then he said, bear me one another's burden, so and so fulfill the law of Christ. And basically, it's as Christ did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves, you do for them without condemnation, but rather to encourage them in the process of the load that they are carrying. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. I, I, I can't be you. That's why oftentimes I say when we have a, a, a altar call, I said, I can pray for you, I can pray with you, but I can't pray for you in the sense, our, our, I said, this is the way I normally say it, I can pray with you, but I can't believe God for you. You must believe God for yourself. Amen. So as much as we might join and believe God in prayer, you got to believe him for yourself. Amen. I can't make you believe. So your burden and your crisis is, is reinforced in strength as I pray with you. But you yourself got to believe God for yourself. Yes. Amen. 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 I can encourage you, but I can't carry it. Uh, Amen. And he said, if you think, it, and again, it's talking in the level of humility, if you think it's something when you're nothing, he said, you deceive yourself. So therefore, continuing in that mindset of weakness. But he said, every, every man is going to prove his own work, and he shall have rejoicing in himself alone. In other words, we'll come to a time where we'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and we will be examined for the works done in our lives. And we will be given, uh, whether the work was a good work or a bad work, the Bible also says that even, uh, even those works that, 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 that don't measure up, it won't cause us not to be saved. But it will be judged according to whether it was a good work or a bad work. I'm so glad for the blood of Jesus Christ because God has already pardoned and covered our past, our present, and our future sin. Woo, I'm sealed until the day of redemption. That don't mean I, I with, with no regard act in the old kind of way. What that means is God knows that I'm still in the process of being transformed. And in the process of my growth, there are times I'm going to stumble and hit my toe. There are times I'm going to fall. But the Bible said you won't be utterly cast down. Why? Because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. So God has a plan and a purpose, and even in the process of my growth, God said, listen, I'm going to keep you and pick you up even when you fall. Because God is a shepherd who cares for his sheep. When you look at this um, first five verses, it says, for every man shall bear his own burden. When you look at these first five verses, there's, there's two principles here, really. It's basically bearing your own burden in the sense of the, the brotherhood of humanity or the brotherhood of souls is that everybody, all humanity, will have to give an account for their soul. Everybody's going to have to give an account to how they live. So that burden is a, 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 a general burden for all humanity. And I can't carry that. You've got to carry that yourself. And then there's the other one he looks at. Uh, he talks about the other principle is really our obligation to sympathize or empathize with those that are struggling and we can encourage them in the process of them being transformed as believers. Uh -huh. He said every man will bear his own burden. Yeah, I know God is going to cause every man to come before you. But then there are them that are of the body of Christ that I must encourage in the process while they are growing in the things of God. Amen. Amen. So God has a responsibility uh, by his word, and we have a responsibility by his word to do what is our, uh, say, our responsibility to encourage, to sympathize, to be there for you, to encourage you in the things of the Lord. Let us bear, now I'm reading something here, but it says, let us bear one another's burden by sympathizing with those that are afflicted. We are to bear one another's burden by in, in, endeavoring to alleviate, if we can, even the burden. The motive is this, or the duty is this, that we fulfill the love of Christ 
by loving our neighbor. Amen. So I can bear your burden as I love my neighbor. Amen. Opportunity knocks. Opportunity knocks. Back to our text here. So Galatians 6 and, and 6. He said, let him that is taught communicate to him that teaches in all things. And it's basically talking about general conversation between the teacher and the student. But let there be conversation between the two so we know what page we're on. Just because you witness to somebody doesn't necessarily mean they believe it and they don't give you no response to what they have heard. But them that we would witness to or minister to or spread the gospel to, he said, let, let, let them communicate back to you that they received it or at least heard it so that their life can be transformed. And then he says, hey, this scripture always uh, stuck with me a little different. And as I got older, I understand even the entire process of, at least I think I do, it said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I used to read this scripture and say, Lord, well, that means that everything in my life that has been sown to my flesh, I'm going to reap damnation and or the corruption of the flesh. But the key word in that scripture is mocked is mocked because as believer we are under the blood of Jesus Christ. We are being transformed by his power and God has the pro, uh, provincial care or his provisional care over us so that we can grow in the things of God without interruption because God allows us to grow. So therefore, even when I make a mistake, even when I have a fault, ask God to forgive me, so on and so forth, God gives me favor and cleanses me and covers me in the blood and keeps me refreshed. Now the difference between me sowing and an unbeliever sowing is that the Bible says, be not deceived, or well, I'm not deceived because I know who Jesus is. He said, be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Before I became saved, I laughed at the things of God. I found them hilarious. I found them foolish. I found them with no interest and no value. But when I became a believer, I began to reverence God. So first off, I'm not deceived because I know who Jesus is. And secondly, I'm not laughing at God. Amen. And what I seek to sow now are things that I sow in the spirit rather than sow in the flesh. But them that mock God, them that are laughing at the things of God, will have the, the charge to give an account for everything in their life that they have, have uh, carelessly and aimlessly lived without no regard to God. So I'm not deceived, and God knows I'm not laughing at him. But rather, I'm walking, according to Galatians, in the spirit that I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So mock is the key word in there. He said, don't be deceived. Don't be, God is not mocked. That's the key word. He said, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Goes on a little further, sow to the flesh, reap corruption, sow to the spirit, which I, as a believer, do consciously and unconsciously, because the Holy Ghost continues to drive me and direct me unto life everlasting. And then he said, let us not be weary. Don't get frustrated, don't get tired, don't get weak. He said, let us not be weary in well-doing, because in the process of me doing right, wrong is always in place. I know. Amen. The apostle put it another way, he said, when I would do good, he said, evil is present. And I find that when even the good things that you do, the enemy of our soul can turn it around and make it look like it was a bad thing. But I thank God that in the process of doing the will of God and seeking to do what pleases God, I ought not to get weary or exhausted because God has a season for me to reap that which I've done. And the good that I've done, God has a purpose and a plan to bring it to fruition. 
fruition. I expect God to honor his word. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Going down a little further in that scripture, he says, listen, he says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, glory to God. God has a season, God has a space for you to receive in your circle of influence, in your house, in your home, on your job, that which you have sown to the Spirit. He said that which you have done right because he said so. He said don't be weary in doing right for in due season, at the appointed time, that's what due season means. In other words, God is never late. He never comes up short, but he says in due season, yes. you shall reap yes. if you faint not. Yes, thank you, Lord. That faint not always bothered me. I said, Lord, what if I, what if, what if, what if I pass out? <laughs> what if I don't make it till then? He said, if you faint not. And the point is, is that God already knows how you're going to finish. Yeah. God already knows the applause that will be reveling in your spirit because you made it and did what God has promised. Woo, God, I thank you. So God said, listen, he said, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season. Yes. Woo, God, I thank you. And, 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 and it's this way, it's, it's, it's like a runner running toward the finish line. Yes. Now, you may not get there first. But you're going to end up at the finish. Hallelujah. Mm. When I was in junior high and high school, I was a wrestler. And we had pretty good, too. I worked you over for a minute. And um, <laughs> that almost, I, I almost feel stiff talking about it. But anyway, uh, and I remember wrestling in ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade. And it was a six minute match. Two minute, you had two minute matches. And uh, you had three two minute periods. periods. I'm sorry, thank you, bro. You had two minute periods, so it was a match would last at a minimum six minutes, but in the course of stopping it and doing this and doing that, and the ref doing their thing, you might be out there 10 minutes. And I remember one time I was wrestling with this guy, and this guy was riding me like a new pony. And I said, Lord, I had one more period to go. We started off, sometimes you start, you start off standing up, and then you start sitting down, then on the last period, you switch up and he's on top. He rode me till he got tired. And I thought about it. Lord, I'm looking the whole while on the mat, he, when he got my face toward the mat, he said, be not weary and well do it. For I do see his you to reap your defense. I was about to faint, but I kept looking up, so looking at the clock. And I knew when the clock hit the end of that two minutes, I was over. That's what it means to not faint. Is that I'm still looking at the finish line. And the Lord is still saying, come on, come on. And when I reach it, I mean, I may be exhausted, but I finished. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap. And then here, here, here's our keeper, as we have therefore opportunity Mm -hmm. let, us. let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Opportunity knocks. As believers, we have the advantage. Yes, we do. We have the advantage. We have the advantage. We have the advantage because God has given us an assignment to tell about him. So therefore, we have the advantage because he's given us assignment by commandment. He said, go ye. So you have an assignment to go into all the world. And then it says, as we therefore have opportunity. In other words, opportunity knocks every time you open your mouth to speak a word of rest, uh, uh, reconciliation and restitution to anybody that would hear it. God is saying, okay, I gave you this responsibility. You have the advantage. Every time you open your mouth. Why? Because I gave you the assignment. That is your assignment is to speak of me. 
Your assignment is to do good, especially to them which are the household of faith. And not only do you have the assignment, you have the authority because God is sovereign. God would never cause you to speak or go anywhere where he would not empower you to be there. Amen. Glory to God. So he says, every time I speak a word of promise, every time I push you forward in your destiny, he said, I'm impacting you with the power necessary to get the job done, so get ready because opportunity knocks. Not only the assignment, not only the authority, but God gives us Holy Ghost access. Amen. Because in the process of me responding to the move of God in my life, God continues to communicate to me the process. He continues to communicate to me what I need to do in the place where I find myself. Oh, God, I thank you to me. He don't stop talking. And we don't stop believing. And he continues to encourage us, encourage us in the good things of God and gives us opportunity to spread them. Amen. Amen. God is pleased that we do his will. God is pleased that you open your mouth and say, you know what? Jesus is good. Yes, Jesus loves me. He's encouraged by our, listen, by our joy, by our praise unto him because he gets more glory. Amen. You've got your assignment. Oh, God. You've got the authority of his word and his power. And God said, in the process of doing, I will allow you to do what I've called you to do and give you the wherewithal in your ear so you know that it's me. Oh, God. As you therefore have opportunity, opportunity not beloved, we have been given a grand opportunity. We are the ambassadors of Christ. As if God in us was reconciling the world to himself. Oh God, I thank you. We ought to have a, a, a peculiar demeanor as Christians. First Peter says it like this in First Peter 4 and 7. He said, but the end of all things is at hand. He said, be ye therefore sober and watch and pray. Scripture sound familiar, don't it? He said, and above all things, he said, have fervent charity among yourself, for charity shall cover the multitude of sin. Mm. He said, listen, the end of all things is at hand. Be sober, amen. Be watchful. In other words, be vigilant, be courageous. Why? Because the end of all things are at hand. Time is winding out. Situations are changing. The earth is moving on. In spite of its disregard for God, God is still in charge of everything. And he said, your responsibility, he said, is to have love among yourself. And the interesting part is the Bible says in the last days that the love of many would wax cold. Now, what is interesting is, you know wax, you can think about how wax is. There's, there's not anything warm about wax. There's not anything significant about wax. But when wax is in play, it, it, it has no feeling. It has no substance. It has no value. He said the love of many would wax cold. But he said, as for you, he said, you ought to walk with a uh, fervent spirit. Walk in love. Walk in, in the joy of God because these things are coming upon us. Folk are hating more than they're loving. And I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the church. So our responsibility is to guard our hearts and love our neighbor as ourselves. And the only way I can do that is through a spirit of meekness and be obedient to what God has assigned to my hand to do is to be an encouragement in the body of Christ, especially those of the household of faith, that God is still able and is still all you need for whatever you need. I've never seen it so much that folk are turning from the church. Folk are turning from the good news. Why? Because they've been convinced as well as deceived 
that God is not enough. Understand this. He's all that we'll ever need. Mm -hmm. Woo! God loved me with a love when I was at my worst. He loved me. Mm -hmm. And he says, listen, mm -hmm. because of that love, I expect you to have charity in your heart toward them that believe. Amen. Especially them of the household of faith. You know, I think sometimes that our churches and our, our gatherings are, are dwindling sometimes is because we don't talk enough about Jesus, but we talk enough about each other. But if we talked about Jesus, then the love of God would, would, would be manifested so much that the conversation would center around him and not about us. Amen. And when you talk about the love of God, the Bible says where two or three are gathered, he said, I'm in the midst. Thank you, Lord. The Lord took 12 men and transformed the world. Amen. Woo, glory to God. Through the love of God. He said, Peter, do you love these more than me? He said, Peter, Lord, you know I love them. Do you love these children? Do you love these lambs? Do you love these sheep more than me? He said, Peter. If there's been any, any failure in the body of Christ, is that we don't feed them. And if we fed them, for folk would be satisfied Woo! Woo! with Jesus and none else. Look what it says here in, in 1 Peter 4 and 7, the 8th verse, uh, the 9th verse. He says, use hospitality. To another, uh, one to another without grudging. He said, be hospitable. And, and, and the interesting part is, even in the case of bearing one another's burdens, we got to watch that we don't try to fix anybody. Don't try to change anybody. And God knows you can't save anybody, but you can tell them of the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. So oftentimes, and, and I think oftentimes women, you have to be careful because you have you are you are sympathetic and you have you've been born with an innate spirit to to be uh, a caregiver and uh, someone who undergirds and for the sake of strength and Eve was called the mother of all the living. So you 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 can be be, be directed by your emotions more than your spirit. And so you have to be careful that you allow the Spirit of God to motivate you because most of the time in the areas of compassion, you don't have to teach a female compassion. But men most of the time have to be taught compassion or see it. And so in that light, we have to be careful that we don't try to change the why. Tell them the gospel and leave it at that. You can't save anybody. Tell them the truth and leave it at that. Amen. 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 Because it's so easy to get caught up in thinking that I can change them. And it's not your call. It's the good news that changes men, women, boys, and girls. And Jesus reached out in compassion to them that would cut his head off. And he still had compassion. Yes. Them that followed him, amen, most of the multitude followed them for what he, they could get. And the Bible says he looked on the multitude and had compassion. Love them anyhow. I know why you're here, but I'm still going to love you. That's the kind of charity we should have and ought to have in the body of Christ. And then he says, as every man has received his gift, even so ministers are the same one to another as good stewards. First Peter 4 and, 8, 4 and 10, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Yes. In other words, I don't have to be in your lane to minister the grace of God. I can minister the grace of God to my brother or my sister through the love of God and stay in my lane. Amen. Amen. I don't have to do you. You don't have to do me. I can tell somebody just as clear as you can tell somebody else, and the grace of God is still ministered to them. Amen. I don't have to copy you. You don't have to copy me. I don't have to be like you. You don't have to be like me. All we got to be like is Jesus. Amen. And because he placed us in the body with our several gifts, talents, 
and your responsibilities. I can tell some of, someone of the love of God out of the responsibility I hold, and they can be changed and transformed just as quick as anybody else. Amen. Amen. I can tell them Jesus loved them, and you can tell them Jesus loved them. Oh, God, I thank you. So opportunity knocks all the time when we recognize that God has given us an assignment as believers. He's given us the authority as believers. Oh, God, and he's given us the access as believers because we are connected. Oh, God, I thank you. Connected to him. Jesus said in Revelation 3 and 20, very familiar, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Opportunity knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come to, into him, will sup with him, and he with me. Jesus says, I'm God. I stand at the door with opportunity knocking. And he said, your responsibility is to open. Now, if he gives the charge that he himself is knocking with opportunity, it is still the responsibility of them that hear it to open the door. Amen. God saves. God heals. God delivers. Our responsibility is to take the opportunity and allow God to do glory to God what he has promised. His word doesn't fail. Where two or three are gathered, he's in the midst. Whether a multitude or a few, Amen. God will do what he has promised. Galatians 6 and 10, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men especially unto those, them who are of the household of faith. Opportunity knocks today, beloved. Mm. All you got to do is open your mouth and God will speak for you. Amen. Maybe there's someone today needing prayer. Maybe you don't know Jesus Christ. You can get saved today because the good news of the gospel is able to change you and bless your life when you put your trust in him. The scripture says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Yes. Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto, unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I just spoke enough for you if you don't know Jesus Christ, to be transformed by the power of God and change your life from a non-believer to a believer, from a sinner to a saint, and all you got to do is say, yes, Lord, to his will. Amen. Yes, Lord, to his will. Opportunity knocks today. All you got to do is open the door, and God will do what he has promised. Oh.